voice of spiritual ventriloquism. You are listening to me himself, Brother Rich here. I got thinking today uh, about the last two videos I did about Hebrew culture. Just basically wanted, in light of the, you know, the things that are going on here in the U.S. Uh, with the police shootings and whatnot, um, just thought I might go along that same line of thought. You know, there is something in a man that uh, desires to be free, or at least any thinking man, uh, that he wants to be the, what, autonomous? Uh, he wants to be the, the, the master of his own destiny, uh, the ruler of his, of his own house, uh, without the, uh, necessarily the interference or <laughs> what you say, uh, unaided criticism of others. Uh, and I believe Yah put that spirit in a man. And any time that such autonomy is abridged uh, through whatever social circumstances that that man becomes, what do you say, not the patriarch or the man that he was created in the image of Yah to become. Uh, and so it was, uh, that was the setup, at least, you know, the way Yah had originally intended it to be, uh, reflecting back on the book of Judges, that even the setup of the tribes of Israel were autonomous, self-ruling uh, tribes, mostly endogamous, uh, except with some intertribal marriages uh, that occurred from time to time. Uh, they all basically were the masters of their own destiny, at least on a, on a patriarchal level. Now, you know, uh, circumstances in life uh, or uh, lead you to a place where, you know, you may not always have uh, that ability to exercise uh, that freedom, that manhood, that autonomy. Uh, and that's what's called servitude. You know, I mean, you know, a man that, uh, you know, that had uh, accrued a debt uh, would then, you know, as a servant, he would obviously, you know, he would give up, you know, some semblance of his autonomy. And uh, anyway, getting back to the to the whole situation is, is that. But with autonomy and with freedom. And with being a master of your own destiny and things like that, there does come a great responsibility to collaborate with your other tribes and brethren and, and, uh, and how you go forth. Uh, and, you know, what is this an old saying that love is a two-way street? And the Torah is the binding document uh, that uh, ties it all together. So... You know, yes, we do have a responsibility one to another, regardless of our freedom and our autonomy, uh, or whatever state we find ourselves in, to whatever degree free men that we are. Uh, you know, it's our responsibility to collaborate through the Torah to make sure that the will of Yah is fulfilled. Now, there was a circumstance and a situation that arose, uh, I addressed this briefly in another video, where Israel began to look out at the other nations and they decided well we really don't want to be responsible for ourselves ultimately it's just too hard for us to be free and autonomous people and free and autonomous men uh, it's too much trouble for us to get together and to agree uh, so we want to have somebody make all the decisions for us we want a king like the other nations they came to the seer with this mess Okay. Not that Yah did not have such an ideal on the books, but it obviously was a word spoken out of season. And the thing frustrated Samuel too greatly. Uh, if you read the account, you can tell he was not at all interested in this. Uh, perhaps it, inside, even a little bit, he took it personally, uh, and which is why Yah had to basically tell them that 
they have not rejected you, Samuel. They have rejected me that I should not rule over him. You see, Israel already had a king, but he was invisible. He sat on a uh, two carabim winged lion throne on the mercy seat, uh, but you couldn't see him like you, the Philistines could see their king, and the Moabites could see their king, and the Assyrians and the Babylonians could see their king. The Egyptians obviously, you know, had a pharaoh sitting on their throne that they could identify with God to them the vicar or representation of God on earth. Nothing's changed. They do this in the Catholic religion. Uh, they do it uh, through the legal process in the United States. It's called guarding more relationships. But anyway, to be the thing displeased Yah, uh, displeased Samuel. But Yah said, you know, it's good what they ask. I'm going to teach them a lesson and let them experience exactly what they're asking for out of season. The Bible says a word spoken in due season. How good is it? If this word was spoken out of season. This request was made out of time, obviously being led by the flesh and not by the spirit. But Yah, he, he uh, what do you say, acquiesced momentarily and said it's a good thing that they ask, uh, but you let them know what they're going to get. They're going to get... A man that's going to take their sons and their daughters and make them bakers and cooks and manservants and maidservants and men of war and chariot riders and gold and uh, what do you say, iron smiths and whatnot. Uh, he's going to take all of these things. He's going to take of your harvest. He's going to take all these things. This is the things that he's going to absolve and absorb, you see. And here in the United States, we have this situation. It's called the federal government. It's an all-consuming uh, selfish, undisciplined, uh, wicked, diabolical system. And you ask for it. You're proud. You actually go to the voting booths every four years and reaffirm your oppression and your bondage. And then you bitch for another four to eight years of, of the king that you voted for uh, or put in office, or at least the majority, because you believe in the democratic system. You are bought into this Western culture. You think that is God to you, and it's not. At any rate, Yah eventually would send the Messiah to Israel, a visible king, and they rejected him a second time. Come on, folks. You guys got to wake up. All right? The, we have got to stop rejecting Yah so that we can hold men's personages in admiration for an advantage because that makes our lives so much easier. Well, anyway, I don't know if I'm just rambling on today. But those are a few thoughts, maybe a little history lesson for those who are interested. Uh, just a few collective thoughts on the issue of autonomy. And be careful what you ask for. You just might get it. Because in the case of the Israelites, it wasn't along the line of Rehoboam. Uh, and, and there really, really was no, you know united monarchy it was walking on eggshells the whole time but by the time Rehoboam came from they were already expressing a discontent and the fact that they were discontented with their request you actually ended up in the division of, of this very fragile uh, united kingdom under one king uh, Rehoboam and uh, here you go uh, all this was in Yah's hand but we should always learn our lessons and be careful what we ask for. We just might get it. Have a good day.